Good afternoon. I'll be brief. Last night, uh, Hurricane Milton made landfall, as we all know, on the west coast of Florida. It brought hurricane winds, heavy rain, including 10 to 20 inches of rain in the Tampa area overnight. Storm surge measurements are still being taken, but 38 tornadoes ripped through 13 counties. Four deaths are reported thus far. It's too early to know the full account of the damage, though. But uh, we know life-saving measures did make a difference. More than 80,000 people followed orders to safety to, sh to sh safely shelter <clears throat> last night. And uh, we've had search and rescue teams at the ready for any calls for help this morning. There's still very dangerous conditions in the state, and people should wait to be given an all clear by their leaders before they go out. We know from previous hurricanes that it's often the case the more lives are lost the days following the storm than actually during the storm itself. Vice President Harris and I have been in constant contact with the state and local officials. We're offering everything they need. I must have spoken to somewhere between uh, 10 and 15 mayors and county executives and all the governors. And uh, in fact, uh, starting this morning, we are getting direct assessments from the storm of FEMA from Director uh, Criswell as well, also Florida Governor DeSantis, whom I had a chance to speak. And the Vice President and I have just convened a meeting this morning with the leaders of the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Defense, including NORTHCOM Commander, who has responsibility for providing defense support to civilian authorities. And that apparently is going very well, as well as from the Coast Guard and from FEMA we receive reports. We focused on what the American military can do like no one else can, provide emergency support for communities in need, and we're required by the governor in a federal, and required by the governor in the affected states. And I've spoken to all the governors, not today all of them, but I've spoken to all of them thus far, and how we can be ready to go in an instant when the call comes. At my direction, the Defense Secretary Austin has provided a range of capabilities both to Florida for Hurricane Milton, as well as the states impacted by Hurricane Helene. And the more capabilities are available, we assess some pressing needs, we can get whatever they need. To the service men and women who are on the ground responding to this, these disasters, thank you. Thank you for your professionalism, your dedication to every mission you're given, and you're repeating it again. This is a whole of government effort. It also includes the Department of Energy and Department of Transportation, Department of Health and Human Services, and the Department of Housing and Urban Development, which is providing mortgage relief for impacted homeowners. As directed, FEMA is going to open disaster recovery centers all across the impacted communities right away. So there's one stop the residents can go to to learn about the support they might need, and that will be advertised where those places are. Three million people are without power, <clears throat> but more than 40 million power, work, power line workers have come from around the country, from Canada to Florida, to restore power across the state. In addition, the Federal Aviation uh, has uh, authorized Florida Power and Light to fly large drones before other manned aircraft can get up in the sky to quickly assess the damage on the ground so ground crews can restore power as quickly as possible. The Coast Guard and the Army Corps of Engineers are assessing how fast they can reopen the Port of Tampa to get fuel, food, water, and other basic goods flowing into the area again and quickly. Additionally, Vice President Harris and I said yesterday, and we'll say it again, to anyone who seeks to take advantage of our fellow Americans' desperation, whether you're a company engaging in price gouging or a citizen trying to scam your neighbors, we will go after you and we will hold you accountable. Now, not only that, our fellow Americans are putting their lives on the line to do this dangerous work and receive death penalties. Some received death penalties yesterday as a result of reckless, irresponsible, relentless disinformation and outright lies that continue to flow. Those who engage in such lies are undermining confidence in the rescue and recovery work that's opening and ongoing. As I speak, they're continuing. These lies are also harmful to those who most need help. Lives are on the line. People are in desperate situations. Have the decency to tell them the truth. So let me say this.
to all the people impacted by Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton. Despite the misinformation and lies, the truth is we're providing the resources needed to rescue, recover, and rebuild. And rebuild. Let me close with this. I know recovery and rebuilding projects can take a long and difficult time. But as long after the press and the cameras move on, I promise you, you have to pick up the pieces still. I want you to know we'll do everything on our power to help you put pieces back together and get all that you need. God bless you, and may God bless our troops and our first responders who are, in some cases, risking their lives to help. Thank you very much. I'll be reporting it again tomorrow. Thank you. Mr. President, on FEMA, funding, on FEMA funding, how much time does Congress have to act before FEMA or the SBA run out of money? That's in discussion now. I don't want to give you a mislead you. I think in terms of uh, um, the SBA, it's pretty right at the edge right now. And uh, I think the Congress should be coming back and moving on the emergency needs immediately. And they're going to have to come back after the election as well, because this is going to be a long haul to for total rebuilding. It's going to take several billion dollars. It's not going to be a matter of just a little bit. But we're providing now to make sure people have the emergency relief they need, the dollars just to be able to get a prescription filled, to get a baby formula done. All the things, that $750 that you're talking about, but Mr. Trump and every, all those other people know it's a lie to suggest that's all they're going to get. That's bizarre. It's bizarre. they got to stop this. It's, I mean, they're being so damn un-American with the way they're talking about this stuff. But there's going to be a need for significant amounts of money. We're already underway of trying to calculate what the cost will be because we don't want to mislead anybody. We want to make sure all the costs are able to be covered. Have you spoken to Speaker Johnson about coming back before the election to vote? No, I haven't. So are you calling on Congress to come back early? I think Congress should move as rapidly as they can, particularly on the most immediate need, which is small business. But are you the, president, the vice president said yesterday that, that FEMA has what it needs. There's enough resources. They don't, the Congress does not need to come back right FEMA right. has its needs. That's different than SBA. Okay, so it's SBA. They need to come back and do SBA. Yeah, but they're going to need a lot more. Mr. President, what, um, what did you, uh, what did Prime Minister Netanyahu tell you about his plans uh, relating to retaliation? He's coming over to help with a storm. Mr. President, have you spoken with former President Trump at all? Uh, Are you kidding me? Mr. President Trump, former President Trump, get a life, man. Help these people. Will you hold him accountable? You said you were going to hold those accountable. Public will hold him accountable. And you better in a press hold account because you know the truth. Well, do you plan to speak with former President Trump? No. 